not just women are in danger, but all marginalized people. We're being uniquely different right now might truly be considered a crime. It seems as though we had all slipped into a false sense of comfort, that justice would prevail and that good would win in the end. Well, good did not win this election, but good will win in the end. So what today means is that we are far from the end. Today marks the beginning, the beginning of our story. The revolution starts here. The fight for the right to be free, to be who we are, to be equal. Let's march together through this darkness and with each step know that we are not afraid. That we are not alone. That we will not back down. That there is power in our unity and that no opposing force stands a chance in the face of true solidarity. And to our detractors that insist that this march will never add up to anything, Boston Red here with Friday Java, a weekly magazine of political theory, polling, and commentary. It is part of the Pete history called people that make up this fascinating journey. We are part of the Obama network. For that, we make no apologies. What we pledge to do is give you the facts on a bridge to history, what body politics is, the most up-to-date theories of political science and cephalogy. Stay tuned for this incredible ride. Boston Red, peace out. Welcome to Friday Java on the 30th of August 2019 from WBRN Radio and on the Boston Red Network. This is our last program for the month of August. It seems like we just started summer as we start to wind down here. The all um, start of the new um, campaign season, so to speak, uh, all the way in 2019, Labor Day. Now, Labor Day next year will officially kick off the uh, campaign season where it will be going. We uh, have noticed uh, several candidates dropping out of the race as we move along. It's down uh, the next debate, uh, which will be in Houston, Texas, hosted by the Monopoly uh, channel of ABC, I believe. And there will be 10 people on stage. Of course, Bernie will be there. Beto O'Rourke will be there. Joe Biden will be around. Amy Klobuchar will be there. Uh, Santa Booker of uh, New Jersey will be on the uh, stage. And uh, several others to round out the 10. We'll get that to you, the whole 10. And don't want to leave anyone out, as they say. Uh, but um, some are, and we'll have some polling here, incidentally. And the people from the University of Virginia, Charlottesville, as we normally do, we'll honor Heather Heyer, who was murdered in Charlottesville, Virginia, by white supremacists. In uh, some standout news, uh, DJ Trump has created a cyber command. Quite literally, uh, they'll be weaponizing uh, space as they move along. We'll have some more on that uh, later in the scene. Greta uh, Torberg has arrived... Uh, in style in New York Harbor. We'll have a special on her uh, with uh, the environment where it is, climate change, etc. She will be addressing the UN. She she arrived uh, by a boat. She did not fly in there, and we'll have a little bit of that in this forecast. Well, let's first go to the Rolling Stone 
Magazine, an interesting article here on Bernie Sanders, the Washington Post. The headline here, this is by Tim Dickerson on the 29th of August. The Washington Post, the latest fact checker, Bernie Sanders is uh, really something. Why did the newspaper's fact checker call Bernie's uh, accurate claims about uh, medical bankruptcy mostly false? Let's see this. I haven't delved into this yet, but uh, we'll see. Medical debt, and, and I don't think anyone disagrees on this, is a major driver of personal bankruptcies. This is a fact that Bernie Sanders highlights in, on his stump speeches and in uh, support of his proposal for Medicare for All. Sanders, who is uh, more fond of statistics than stories, drives home the point with big numbers. Half a million people go bankrupt every year because they can't uh, pay their outrageous medical bills. We've seen outrageous medical bills coming, he said on TV recently, repeating the same point. A half million uh, Americans go bankrupt because they cannot pay their uh, medical bills. They uh, didn't go to Vegas and blow their money in the casino. Their crime was they got sick. It's a a barbaric system, and I'm going to destroy... And uh, I am going to destroy uh, your family's finance because of a can- Are you going to, excuse me, because of a cancer? The Washington Post, uh, political fact checker department, uh, the aim is aimable to hold candidates accountable and call them out when they are playing fast and loose with the uh, so called truth. Now, that gets to be um, dicey in itself. One person's truth is another one's uh, falsity. Uh, is it objective or not? But as uh, the post recent Checkup Sanders medical bankruptcy stat uh, underscores the newspaper pursuit of facts, can at times go off the rail. The piece gives uh, Sanders free Pinocchios uh, for the uh, claim on medical debt, which the paper's shorthand for mostly false. You've seen those Pinocchios before. Of course, DJ Trump doesn't care. You can give him eight Pinocchios. So what uh, is with the multiple Pinocchios? Pinocchios de- didn't uh, self-propagate uh, when they lie. The uh, new screw. To earn three Pinocchios, we must assume Bernie's claim is a uh, bit uh, dodgy. One uh, wooden uh, puppet short of a whopper. So what's the matter with the stat? Is it turns out nothing much at all. Bernie's team told the Post that the Vermont Senate was relying on an estimate published in a medical journal uh, that found 66.5% of bankruptcy filers that cite either medical bills or missing work due to illness as a reason they went broke. The journal itself said it was equivalent to about 530,000 bankruptcies annually. At first glance, it appears uh, Bernie understands the problem. By uh, rounding down, the, the uh, checker did an admiral thing, reached out to the author of the study. It was Dr. Uh, David uh, Himmer, uh, Himmerstein, a professor of public health at uh, CUNY uh, System, a lecturer at the Harvard uh, Medical School. When we asked uh, Dr. Uh, Himmer, Himmerstein uh, whether Sanders quote to his study accurately, uh, the fact checker report, he said yes. It was time went on to unpack the fact checker that even if you uh, were to adopt a more limited measure of bankruptcy uh, that were uh, very much linked to medical debt, the number of people going broke is still north of a half million because a single bankruptcy t- uh, typically affects multiple people in a family unit, even if you use uh, the uh, restricted definition and standard standard statement is accurate. Dr. Hammerstein said to review the post fact checker uh, going straight to the source a Harvard lecture found that uh, Bernie uh, was uh, sticking close to the facts and if anything underestimated the problem. So why did he get the uh, the post excuse me why didn't uh, the post give uh, Bernie uh, cover for trueness. Yes, it really uh, called this. Uh, you uh, can't make this uh, well, anyway up. The office spent the rest of uh, 1,600 uh, 
words uh, splitting hairs and then trying to not takes it upon himself to not to not simply uh, fact check Sanders but the medical journal that Sanders relied upon and it turned out that if you dig deep far enough you'll uncover a minor league uh, academic uh, beef about bankruptcy certificates with professors arguing that to the extent to which one can say the contributing factor of medical debt is actually what caused the bankruptcy despite this uh, pledgent uh, uh, pedantry of it. The fact checker didn't get to the bottom of everything. It doesn't prove that one side of the ivory tower debate is in fact right while the other side is wrong. Well, you're looking at it dialectically, uh, definitely that is the case. More important, he doesn't offer any evidence that Sanders was aware of this uh, teapot uh, tempest uh, or that he in any way was out to deceive voters. Instead, the author proudly presents the unholy uh, <clears throat> tangle he himself created to conclude the omissions and twists are significant enough to merit a free uh, Pinocchio's uh, for uh, Bernie. The process by which the post uh, fact checker trans uh, transmodifies a basic true statement into a, a ruling of false, mostly false, is a case study in usefulness of a political fact checkers as is often practiced. Subjecting political speech to this kind of nitpicking is folly, yeah, no doubt. The entire nature of uh, the political enterprise is looser than uh, than that. Politicians speak to a broad systematic problem. If they have sharp and they are sharp and persuasive, they have statistics at hand. If the staff is any good, these statistics have uh, reputable studies to back them up by any means and measure what Sanders said is accurate for the purpose of the project. If citing a study accurately enough to satisfy its offer is still uh, Getting mostly false, it's hard to know what could pass, uh, possibly pass muster. Muster, excuse me. In reality, translating any academic study into mass market speech and necessarily requires getting out of the weeds and making uh, simplifications and discarding the footnote uh, caveats. To dole out Pinocchios for a good faith effort is to translate a public health into a uh, swamp. Uh, Speech is journal- journalistically obtruse. Petty fogging a brand of pet, fa- excuse me, of fact checkers is also ironic, precisely because the editors and writers commit the same uh, abstractions that politicians do, including the Post and including this very piece. The headline for the fact checkers: Sanders flawed statistics of a half million bankruptcies a year is an uh, even-handed representation of a wrong-headed analysis, but display copy at the top of the browser uh, sands off the edge and simplifies the story and becomes even more declared Bernie Sanders' false claims on a half million bankruptcies. If that's accurate by the post's own test, own test it appears to represent some sharing of facts, selective uh, telling of truth, some omissions and exaggerations, we have to give it one uh, fact check update. This now appears to be an actual problem with the fact checker itself. The uh, post author claimed that Hammerstein's journal article had uh, had not been peer reviewed in a letter uh, by Hammerstein tweeted by uh, a uh, senior Sanders advisor. The doctor said that's not true. Writing uh, your false claim has uh, besmirched my reputation as a scholar. The Washington Post. Uh, the Bernie study cited a half million medical bankruptcies was not peer review. Study offered your Washington Post fact checkers article falsely claimed that my article in the American Journal of Public Health had not undergone peer review. Demand a retraction. Warner uh, Gunnels, uh, there, that's on August the 29th. Glenn uh, Kessler, the editor of the uh, Fact Checker Project has responded. He maintains that the sentence uh, did not undergo the uh, AJPH editorial did not undergo the same peer review editing process as a research article and and a supporting quote in the next paragraph deciding 
excuse me, describing a lack of peer, peer review did not mean to imply that Hammerstein's paper was not peer reviewed. Boy. This is false. The article did not say it was not peer reviewed. We quote an editor saying the, edit, the editorial did not undergo the same peer review ed, uh, editing process as a research article, but noted it used a methodology similar to what researchers use in a uh, 2005 peer review study. Oh boy. So on we go. In other words, splitting hairs here to pedantic, and this is from uh, Glenn uh, Kessler at the WP writing on the uh, 29th of August 2019. The article did in fact have peer review and quibbling here evidently about how uh, thorough the peer review was. So the offer here demands a retraction and we'll stay with this to see exactly what happens. But the post itself of being a monopoly owned uh, as some would call the Amazon Post. We use the Post quite a bit, but some of these fact checkers do not need to get uh, in this position. DJ Trump will have a field day with the Washington Post's fact checker on this issue here. Anyway, let's uh, move along here. I guess we'll go to Larry Sabato, uh, and this is from Kyle uh, Klondick, the managing editor of The Crystal Ball. Notes on the uh, state of politics. One big exception to uh, the stability in the Democratic race. Trump's uh, high uh, GOP uh, approval uh, defines the uh, Republican primary. Special developments in Georgia and in Washington. And the key takeaways here. Democratic primary races have been very stable with the biggest exception being Elizabeth Warren's uh, rise to become one of the, the uh, clear front runners, Donald Trump's attracting primary challenges, but standing within the uh, GOP remains strong. Ian uh, Georgia, this is Johnny uh, Iguson here, pinning resignation expands the uh, Senate playing field next year. Ian in Wisconsin, as uh, Sean Duffy, he's in Wisconsin seven, plans to resign, sets up another special election in a re- uh, Republican leaning. The rise of Warren early this week, Monmouth University has sent out a shockwave through a social media by reporting a freeway uh, atop the Democratic heap with uh, former Vice President uh, Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren, all effectively tied at about 20% of support. Regular readers c- could probably predict our reaction, which was essentially this. Don't jump to conclusions uh, based on a single poll. Sure enough, on uh, Wednesday morning, two other national polls, Quantiac and USA Today Suffolk uh, confirmed uh, much more uh, to uh, previous polls, with Biden clearly leading, the other candidates gaining uh, a little over 30% of the vote. That's essentially what the polls have shown all year, but amidst the, uh, the stability, there has been uh, at least one a notable change in polling, all of the candidates, uh, of all the candidates, Warren is the one whom standing has clearly improved in the last several months. There's no doubt about that. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, first look at the figure, which is taken from real clear uh, politics, national polling average, Democratic primary note. The standing was on January the 1st of this year. Demarcation on the left, then on the standing there, where Kamala Harris remained marred in single digits. Her position is a little better but a polling a surge from the first debate was largely dispatched. Buddha Judge has put himself on the map while uh, Beto O'Rourke has uh, faded, but neither has polled as a true contender. If, if the real clear average is where uh, a real poll with a uh, margin of errors, it isn't, but to bear in mind uh, with us for the overall point, we must characterize much of the change for many of the candidates from the start of the year to the end of August as being uh, statistically insignificant. Warren's rise from 4% to 16% is the kind of change that uh, a half-decent poll would suggest is statistically significant. That doesn't mean she's leading. Biden is clearly uh, leading on the bulk of data. 
are it necessary that she has surpassed Sanders for second place, which she's also along with Sanders and Biden, one of the front-running group, where they would like to have it. We uh, cannot nece- uh, necessarily make the assumption that the shape of the race is set in stone. Months remain until Iowa votes. No doubt about that. Harris uh, showed potential to climb high and, and may yet again. Some of the lower polling candidates they name here uh, Senator Booker from uh, New Jersey, Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota may get their uh, movement. Remember, for instance, in the Republican race, while Willard Romney ended up winning at one point in this race, he was uh, trailing uh, Texas Perry, uh, Perry, excuse me, and two contenders who would become Romney, Romney's chief uh, rivals, Satorium and Old Newt, were combining for a uh, 7.5% of the vote. And, of course, they shared a vote. They shared a vote that Klobuchar and Booker are now combining for uh, about 3%. Would envy. The hopes of momentum is the sun uh, sustaining many of the candidates right now. Uh, we have already started to see some candidates fall by the wayside. Uh, no doubt about that. Ms. Uh, Gil, uh, Senator uh, Gildebrandt of, uh, of New York. Wednesday's round of polling apparently means that only 10 candidates qualify for the next debate. That is on September the 12th in Houston, Texas. Warren has perhaps benefited from not sharing a stage yet with uh, Biden and Harris with her candidacy rising in the polls. The Trump primary. To show how strong D.J. Trump remains in the Republican Party, consider a recent Associated Press uh, Center for uh, Public Affairs poll showed Trump's approval rating amongst Americans just 39%, his disapproval at 62 this is like the Mama poll citing uh, above, feeling like an outliner. Uh, Trump's approval rating is usually in the low 40s. His disapproval is in the low 50s. One of the reasons why EP's poll might show a lower approval rating for Trump other than others, than others is because it is a poll of all adults. The group is often more Democratic, leaning a smaller pool of registered voters there. Needlessly, even the AP poll, uh, Trump's approval rating amongst Republicans was 79%. He's usually around 79-80%. Trump is uh, not without an opponent. Uh, be aware of the Commonwealth. Uh, ran as a libertarian in uh, 2016. Joe Walsh, a frame floor, floor, has put his hat in the end. We'll see where he goes. And Terry Sanford uh, of uh, South Carolina who lost out on his house race. I'm not sure if he can mount anything going. It's easy to dismiss this motley crew of Trump challenges, challenges out of hand. To be clear, we, we didn't see any of them as a threat to the nomination. Perhaps uh, he might have trouble in places that were notably cool to him in 216, like the Mormon down there and dominated Utah. However, also remember that Trump's real opponent the primary's expectations. We know it earlier this year based on history and coming in Trump's position in his own party should probably win uh, two thirds or more of the vote. New Hampshire, if he's consistent, he runs ahead of share in New Hampshire. That could be interesting right there. The Senate map expands in uh, Florida, uh, where Stacey Abrams is uh, the headline should be here. Uh, Johnny Eigenson is, is resigning as the end of the year. Help reasons there. Me and Georgia will have two Senate elections next November, raising the stake there. The state is more Republican than a nation, but is becoming more competitive, no doubt about that. Initial ratings of the Senate race, a special election leans Republican, which matches the ratings of the state's other Senate seat. David Perdue is uh, running for re election, and the uh, state's uh, presidential race uh, ratings. The two uh, interrelated uh, trends combine to the reasoning of these ratings. First is that the President and Senate votings are coming more and more into alignment. The second is when the state holds two Senate elections at a time. It's very common for the same party to win both races, no doubt about that. The last time a state held a double re-election operation was Strom Thurmond, while uh, backing Ernest Fritz Hollings, in, uh, Democrat in the special, they included two concurrent Senate elections held 
last year. Democrats swept both race. That was in Minnesota. And in Mississippi, there was a race between uh, the Klan type, uh, Cindy Hyde Smith, uh, and uh, Mike Epps. And they had a jungle primary going in Mississippi. All candidates ran uh, towards the same ballot, and the top two fin- finishes advanced to the uh, runoff. Mississippi's example is instructive because it appears that we uh, this will also be uh, a format for the special election in uh, Georgia. Brian Kemp will appoint a temporary senator to fill Isingson's uh, resignation, and there will be a uh, election to fill the remaining two years of the expired term. That'll be in 2020. The election uh, will uh, feature an all-party primary, a post-election runoff. Probably uh, an event no one gets to 50%, just like in Arizona, which is holding a special Senate election next year. This seat will be back on the ballot in uh, 2022. Will Kemp uh, pick a placeholder? There's a big question there. There's a lot of ambitious uh, Republicans in uh, Georgia. Meanwhile, will any Democrat uh, switch over the other... uh, for the other Senate race, there are many uh, contenders there. Stacey Abrams, who lost a close gubernatorial race uh, to Kemp, passed on challenge in Purdue, announced Wednesday that she will not run for the other Senate seat either. So she's out of the race. Well, I guess we made a mistake there. Spoke too quickly. It would behoove both parties to rally around a single candidate in the special, uh, in, the special in order to get the person a chance to win the election outright in 2022. Lean's Republican is there rating. Uh, this is to Duffy in Wisconsin. This is a Republican district there. Uh, Duffy's resignation prompts a special election in the Northwest uh, District uh, sometime next year, perhaps with uh, on the 7th of April 2020 with the presidential primary and state Supreme Court. Republicans, uh, that it's impossible to imagine, excuse me, a Democrat winning Trump won the district by uh, 20 points. That's about the same margin of the old uh, PA, P18, which uh, now uh, Representative Connor Lamb, 17 captain in the 2018 election. Wisconsin 7th presidential leaning is similar to the margin in that district. Running to the LSC uh, Republicans held while running significantly behind Trump. In 2016, Ohio 12, uh, Trump 11, South Carolina 5, uh, minus f- uh, 5, plus 19, so forth and so on. Closely watched and competitive, uh, what's this, North Carolina 9, 9 by 12 votes. The district is a version of the one that long-serving uh, David Ogilvy, I forgot about him, uh, he's been held for more than a four cases, 40 years before retiring. In advance of the uh, 2010 election, Ogilvy himself won the district in uh, 1969 special election captain for Democrats after Republican Melvin Laird. He was lead Melvin Laird was once uh, defense secretary. Dotted with small towns, overwhelmingly European, below the national uh, average in four-year college, has been trending away from the Democrats, especially with Trump. Leading the GOP as recent as 218, Barack Obama carried almost every uh, county in uh, that uh, decade. Version of uh, Wisconsin 7, and in uh, 1996, Bill Clinton uh, did carry every uh, county, but Democratic presidential nominee barely carried it in, in 2000, 2000. Four, it voted for Mitt Romney by three points in 2012. After Republicans uh, ordered district to protect uh, Duffy as a part of uh, decennial uh, redistricting, before backing Trump by 20 points, the GOP tenured there even with bad environment of 218. Is now former uh, governor uh, Boss Walker carried it by 16 points. Volkmer, Volkmer carried it by four points while losing. 11 points statewide to Senator Tammy Baldwin. It's just moved from state Republican to uh, likely a Republican. All right, let's fly along here. The hurricane that uh, missed Puerto Rico is uh, now 
heading towards Florida should arrive there uh, in Darien uh, not a typical one bizarre elements of Darien this is from the uh, Washington Post he could arrive there uh, Monday Sunday not sure about what he is going to do in Alabama the governor there uh, uh, Cade Ivey uh, apologized for wearing blackface in college saying she wouldn't resign but it could be a big problem in uh, Florida incidentally the three uh, arrested in Hong Kong in the demonstrations at Joshua Wong Angie uh, Chow they have been released by the Hong Kong authorities interesting situation going on there and the hurricane let me just check my time here. okay this is Hurricane uh, Dorian uh, is approaching uh, Florida using an unusual path. This is from the Washington Post. Hurricane Dorian has uh, been a, a tricky forecast and usual from the storm. This is by Matthew uh, Capucci, both uh, because of its uh, small size and the uh, surrounding weather systems that will determine its fate. Typically tr- tropical storms located in its position are more than a 200 miles uh, northwest of Puerto Rico on uh, Thursday afternoon would not make landfall on the uh, Florida coast. It could look uh, to, uh, if we look to past storms for guidance, Dorian may or may not behave. Historic analogies have uh, their limits, and we've always talked about this in uh, political polling. At 11 a.m. on uh, Thursday, uh, Dorian uh, was swirling about uh, 21.4 degrees North latitude in 67.2 degrees west latitude uh, since 1947. If you look at a, a, a database there from the National Oceanic uh, Administration, shows that 30 uh, hurricanes have passed within 100 miles of this location over the ocean, o- over the op- open ocean, including the previous iteration of National Hurricane. Center recycles names every, uh, oh, I see, every six years unless a storm causes enough damage there. Storms only five have uh, made landfall in Florida. Two of them passed directly over the Florida Keys. Two hit the east coast of Florida. Among them was Francis in 2004, while it battered uh, Fort uh, St. Lucia as a Category 2. While uh, Francis' uh, tracks to date is in a, a good analogy for Dorian, it's a uh, future track is in the horrible analogy. That is from Philip Kosenbach, uh, an aerospace uh, and atmosphere, excuse me, a scientist at the Colorado State University. Doran looks like it will uh, slow up as it heads towards land, just like uh, Francis did. There are two others, uh, an unusually named storm in 1947, plowed ashore with as a Category 4 in uh, Fort Lauderdale. One additional storm, Kate, in, in 1985, danced over Cuba, recurving north uh, in the Gulf of Mexico and moving ashore near uh, Panama City. Majority of them uh, recurved before reaching the U.S. That's from Brian uh, Mc, uh, McNulty, I suppose, uh, Capital Weather Gang, um, tropical storm expert. No exceptions, one that didn't uh, recurve. Uh, Irma in 2017. We can also work backwards to see where storms affecting Florida generally come from. Uh, they move ashore uh, uh, along the eastern the east coast of Florida, generally moving in from the south or from the southwest. We look at 128 systems that pass near directly over Florida's east coast since 1800s. All 11 of them pass within 100 miles Dorian. Uh, Thursday morning is a position of about 8.5. In other words, uh, the forecast path for Doran isn't is unusual, but n- but has a precedent. President, excuse me. One of the more bizarre elements of Dorian's uh, predictive path is the uh, broad left curve. It probably make between Friday and the weekend when uh, tropical uh, cyclones drift north. They usually uh, recurve to the right once they. Uh, swamp uh, by mid-latitude uh, weather system. Well, we'll see here. Uh, the system is weaker. Uh, 
or east door and could escape uh, out to sea. But if it's strong, as forecast right now, then the storm uh, could uh, surpass, uh, preventing it from maneuvering uh, north and instead plow into Florida. So the big guess is here. The uh, Hurricane uh, Center is forecasting Darn to be a Category 4. Watch out and great uh, and greater at landfall sometimes on Monday into Tuesday on the east shore of the Sunshine State. That is Florida. Roughly 18 are uh, major uh, Category 3 plus hurricanes to make landfall on the east coast of Florida were available in the, in the database. Uh, only one came ashore in the north part of Florida. Atlantic coast, nearly all of them, 16 in fact, hit south of St. Uh, Lucia, Port St. Lucia. If the metal, le- uh, the metal water, <laughs> the metal, let me get this right. The uh, weather models and the National Hurricane Center are correct in their forecast a major hurricane making landfall uh, on Florida's east coast could be in rare company. which is especially true if the storm makes landfall north of uh, the Space Coast. However, there's a remote chance that Dorian's uh, center remaining offshore entirely just skirting, skirting the coast before it swamps north. Matthew uh, Capucci is a meteorologist for Capital. Uh, the Weber gang earned his B.A. in Atmospheric Science from uh, Harvard. Oh. In, uh, that's interesting. In 2019, and has contributed to the Washington Post since he was 18. So he's new at uh, so the question is, we don't know where it'll end up uh, with him. Uh, we'll save uh, Greta uh, Hornberg here. We've already hit her. And see if we can get the polling. This is from a real uh, clear politics. Okay, this is uh, on Wednesday, the 28th of August. So uh, from uh, Kuniak uh, polling, hope I'm pronouncing it right. They have uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden up by 13. He's at 32. Bernie Harris at 15. Uh, Elizabeth Warren at 19. Harris at 7, Buna Judge at 5, uh, Mr. Yang at 3, Booker at 1, um, and McGillibrand's gone. Anyway, uh, Beto at 1, so forth and so on, Klobuchar. This is a national poll here, and we also have another national poll from uh, Suffolk. Uh, it's Biden up by 18, Bernie has 12, Elizabeth Warren has 14, uh, Harris is in single digits. Buddha Judge there at 6. And Senator Booker is at... Anyway, uh, another national poll. This is from YouGov, the Economist. As it's a tighter race here. As uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden by 4. He's at 25. Bernie at 14. And has Elizabeth Warren at 12. Harris at 8. Buddha Judge at 5. Booker at 2. Klobuchar at 1. Now let's look, do some matchups. General election, now this is Kornyak also. Uh, Joe Lunchbox Biden is up 16 over D.J. Trump. Uh, Bernie uh, Sanders is up 14 over D.J. Trump. Uh, 53 to uh, 39 for D.J. Elizabeth Warren, she's up by 12 over D.J. Trump. 52 to 40. Kamala Harris is up by 11 over D.J. Trump. And Buna Judge is up by 9. And we go to Michigan here. This is the EPIC poll. Uh, he has uh, Biden up by 10 over D.J. Trump, 51 to 41. Bernie Sanders up by 4, 48 to 44 in the state of Michigan. And uh, Elizabeth Warren's up by 6, a little bit better there. And Harris by 3 over uh, D.J. Uh, Trump. And if we look at this, I don't know if we've given this one before or not. This is on Wednesday. This is Emerson. Had Biden up by 7. He's at 31. Uh, Bernie Sanders at 24. A turn about Emerson, incidentally, is uh, out of Boston. Um, Elizabeth Warren at 15. Harris at 10. Buna Judge uh, at 3. Uh, Mr. Yang at 4. Booker at 3. Uh, Beto at 3. So there we go. Klobuchar at 1. And I think we've given this before. Uh, Politico, a uh, morning consult had him up by, this is Joe Biden up by three. And he has uh, Sanders by, uh, at 20, uh, so that's 13. Elizabeth Warren at 15. So these polls vary a little bit from the 27 on as to where they are going. And we, this is in the state of Michigan here. I think we went over USA Today's uh, poll. This is Suffolk poll. Americans dread, uh, as the headline here, 
the 2020 election. Uh, Biden maintains his lead. What lead there is. And this was on, this is Santa Silly. On the 28th of August, basically. It, it pretty much says the same thing here. If the candidates, if their support uh, lose, nearly 4 in 10 America. If the candidates support lose, this is interesting here. 4 in 10 say they would uh, have little or no confidence in the election that had been conducted in a fair and square way, setting up what could be a debate over legitimacy of the next president. Those expressing uh, doubts cross partisan lines. 30% of the Republicans, 45% of the Democrats, only identified different threats to the election process. In the crowded Democratic contest of Joe Lunchbox, Biden uh, retains a wide lead at uh, 32%, up two percentage points uh, from the June poll. Um, Elizabeth Warren, the Commonwealth, moved up four points to second place at 14. Uh, Bernie Sanders dropped three. Now in third place at 12. So this is what we see here. And this is a confidence rate here. Buchanan lost. Very confident. Looks like uh, 9%. Somewhat confident. 18%. Not very uh, confident. 20%. Uh, 21%. Oh, I see. It's a color coding. Uh, 21%. Somewhat confident. Very confident. Uh, and... Uh, Twenty-one percent, thirty-two percent, not very confident. So this is kind of this poll that says a lots about the system here. Elizabeth Warren rises. Uh, these early primaries in Iowa, uh, New Hampshire, uh, and uh, Nevada, and South Carolina. Now this is from David. Uh, Pelagosis, from Sai, had trouble pronouncing his name. He lacked understanding of uh, Biden, Warren, and Sanders to cement what's beginning uh, to harden in the race. And some of people make various comments here. The two percenters, Sandy Booker um, and uh, Beto Roy. Now there's a talk about what's going to happen to Buna Judge here. Um, the next de debate could make or break him. Very difficult to say there. And Democratic voters surveyed include oh well, Bullocks uh, disappeared and the Blasio and me in New York. And, um, Danley is gone. Kristen uh, Gillibrand is gone. Amy Clovis is still around. His characters have, as they say, disappeared into the abyss. Amongst Republicans, over 90% support DJ Trump. 5 support uh, percent uh, Bill Ware, and of course, Joe Walsh jumped into the uh, situation. Over half of those surveyed, 53%, say they would uh, be very or somewhat confident the election had been conducted. Said they would be very or somewhat confident that the election had been conducted fairly if their candidate leaves. 33% said they would not be very confident, and that's where that poll uh, left off there. Let me go do the uh, sports. I'll do some of college here, see what we got. Yeah, this is, uh, well, wait a minute here. Actually, this is way back here. Uh, August 24th. Florida and the University of Miami, Florida was 24. Now we go into Thursday, uh, Clemson, uh, 52 to 14 over Georgia Tech. And then we had Texas State and Texas 41 to 7. And Utah and Utah 30, BYU 12. Florida A&M uh, was shut out by UCF. And games coming up today. Florida Atlantic at Ohio State. Northern Iowa at Iowa State. And they're ranked 21, I guess. South Alabama at 24, Nebraska, the Big Red Machine. And Eastern Washington at Washington. And then uh, Seattle, 13th, they're ranked. And number two, Bama uh, at Duke and Bama, actually. Idaho will be at 15 rank Penn State. Northwestern will be at uh, Stanford. Syracuse at Liberty. Uh, they rank 22. That's the evening game. Georgia, number 3, will be at Vandy. Uh, Georgia Southern at number 6, LSU. Middle Tennessee at number 7, Michigan. The Oregon Ducks at Auburn. They are rated 11. 
Miami of Ohio, and number 20, um, Iowa. Louisiana Tech, and number 10, uh, Texas. New Mexico and Washington be 10 o'clock there. And uh, on Sunday, uh, Houston, uh, that's an unusual day, September 1st, and number 4, Oklahoma. And on Monday, Notre Dame and Louisville. Notre Dame is, anyway, that's so much for college ball. Let's get the baseball scores in as we get ready to blow out of here. Had some uh, trouble uh, with our uh, updating process here the last few days. Maybe head it up. Uh, this is uh, from the uh, 29th. The night we had the wrong damn date up. Anyway, Cleveland uh, shut out uh, Detroit in Detroit to zip the Athletics 9 to 8 in Kansas City over Kansas City the Twins 10 to 5 on the south side of Chicago with white over the White Sox. The uh, Rays um, outlast the Astros in Houston 9 to 8. The Cubbies 4 to 1 in New York over the Mets. And in a 12, the Marlins outlasted the Reds in a Florida 4-3. They probably won't be playing the baseball there this weekend. The Mariners a 5-3 over uh, lackluster, uh, lackluster Texas. And the uh, Pirates 11-8 over the Rockies in Denver. The Dodgers lost to the D-backs in Arizona 11-5. And finally, the Project, the excuse me, the Padres uh, in San Francisco 5-3 there. Padres had eight hits and no errors, and Frisco eight hits and no errors also. So there we go. That does it for sports. That will do it for us. We'll see you on the week that was on our political side, uh, Boston Red. Everyone, a a good uh, weekend. This is Boston Red from the Jerry Pippen Broadcast booth. And uh, we'll have some special programming on Labor Day. That should be on Sunday. We're getting something together there. We'll have an environmental program. It probably will be next week. I'm not sure about that. We'll uh, feature uh, Greta uh, Torberg, I think is her name. Anyway, she arrived in uh, New York Harbor on the special ship. And uh, we'll have the Monday morning quarterback on uh, Monday. 